Hello, I'm your author, Ron Perea. How are you? I'm about to read a passage of the novel Elsie and Elsa. So just kick back and tune in. A sign of the entrance reads, Hughes Aircraft. Deafening machinery, sounds blend with protectively clothed female assembly line workers. All shout instructions amongst themselves. The combined sounds echo off of the walls of the cavernous structure. Workers step over and climb through in and out of rows of partially assembled B-10 Army Air Corps bombers. Intense flurries of bright sparks fly in all directions as they solder aluminum beams together. At the halfway mark along the assembly line, huge shadows start to bounce off of each shiny plane. One of the long row of welder finishes a task. She turns off her torch and places it aside. Pushing up her mask, Elsa wipes sweat from her face with a dirty sleeve while inspecting her work by walking through the length of 250-foot aluminum wing from tip to tip. Cranes slide overhead along rails, delivering sheets of aluminum to the next lot of airframe skeletons. Gloved female workers, standing in designated spots, carefully guide each 8 by 5 foot sheet into place. As quickly as the crane moves in, it moves out, clearing way for the next shiny sheet. As her core workers do, Elsa's gloved hands expertly guide one side of razor-sharp sheet into place. A team of rivet gunners step in to bolt the sheet to a designated portion of the frame. A rivet gunner climbs out of the plane's cockpit frame. She puts the tool on the work table and pulls off her goggles to adjust the bandana around her head. Elsie's shirt sleeves are rolled up, revealing her newly developed muscles that ripple with each move. She takes a deep breath, then loads her gun with more rivets before joining the line again. Soon, the siren echoes throughout the hangar, signaling a shift change. One crew quits for the day, while the next shift continues where they left off. The sun sits on the horizon as the two friends walk out of the front gate together, where they jump on a waiting bus. It moves through the San Fernando Valley, below the San Gabriel Mountains where it is dark in West Covina when it drops them off. After walking and walking, they finally open the white picket fence to Esther's and Ambrose's home. Their jackets are thrown over their shoulders as they see the Christmas tree listen and glistening and glistening in the window. Back home, we'd be wearing a coat, says Elsie, smiling. Before they open the side door, they can hear Glenn Miller's Moonlight Serenade coming from the radio. The song finishes directly into a, another Miller song, Jukebox Saturday Night. Remember when those songs first came out, Elsie asks? It was a Saturday night, and we were out with my brother and his buddy. Yeah, that buddy had his hands all over me, Elsa, Elsa recalls. Yeah, I remember. Where are my sis and her husband? The girls sit down to rest after hanging up their jackets. It's not like them to leave the Christmas lights on. They rest until the next one starts up. Little Brown Jug. Isn't that another Miller tune? I want to hear something by Frankie, Elsa says with a slight exhaustion. Elsie says, isn't that the third Glenn Miller song in a row? There's a moment of silence until the announcer speaks. If you have not heard yet, the BBC in London reports that an airplane carrying famed American swing band leader Glenn Miller is missing over the English Channel and is presumed lost. Miller's somber fool's rush in fills the room. 
The girl seemed to go into shock. Tears filled their eyes as they can hear someone, Esther, crying out in the other bedroom. Through the thin walls, they hear Ambrose say, That's okay, baby. Go ahead. It's okay. She's always been a big Glenn Miller fan, Elsie tells Elsa. The mournful sound of Miller's solo trombone smoothly fades away. The next day, the factory workers enjoy a momentary diversion when two 50-foot banners are raised into place over the sides of the cavernous facility. One reads, Loose lips sink ships, while the other exclaims, Slackers help the axis. Workers on the line experience a slight boost in motivation, while those on their 30-minute lunch break simply take it in stride. The majority sit at the break tables, finishing their sack lunches or cigarettes. Elsa and Elsie sit silently next to each other, unable to hide their mutual humdrum outlook. They split and share their one stick of ration chewing gum. A gal sitting next to Elsa notices this and graciously offers her a cigarette. Elsa smiles while shaking her head. I know. Thank you, Betty. It'll help you relax, Betty insists. Well, aren't they rationed? Listen, it's time to relax. Besides, these cigs are pushing their stale limit. Out of curiosity, Elsa accepts. I've never smoked before. She offers to share half with Elsie. Who nods? Elsa breaks a Lucky Strike cigarette in two and hands her half. Both fumble with it only to learn that the action spills valuable tobacco. As each carefully lights her half with their one rationed match, both cough as they try to inhale. Betty asks, Elsie, aren't you from New Mexico? How many times have I told people around here that I much, I tremendously miss home? Elsie asks between coughs. Betty takes a worn envelope from her pocket. It's obviously military with all the markings all over it. I've been writing a soldier from New Mexico, but I can't anymore. Elsa leans towards her. I thought you were engaged to a local boy. Betty nods. In good conscience, I can't do both anymore. As Elsa reaches for the letter, Betty hands it to her. My thinking was to ask you, Elsie, because you're from New Mexico, if you're interested in writing to your fellow New Mexican. He's cute. I don't have his photo anymore, but he's cute. Elsie snaps a letter from Elsa and looks it over. Sure, why not? I always wanted to. It's a small way to do my part. When the assembly line whistle blows, Betty carefully snubs out the cigarette, putting the remainder in her pocket. Elsie and Elsa quietly drop theirs. As they head back to work, Elsie slips the letter into her overhaul pocket. If you enjoyed that passage, you will love all of the rest of the international historical adventures riddled with extraterrestrials, espionage, and entertainment in my historical fictional novel, Elsie and Elsa. Just click that button beside this video to order your private copy that I will personally autograph just for you with a smile. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you very much.